1984, we did blockade uh, uh, Mears Island, and, and my father was alive at the time, and he was one of the chiefs of our tribe. And he stood there in front of the uh, loggers and said, no, you cannot come here. He stayed there for three months without leaving, with my brothers and I. We looked for many different ways of how we might be able to uh, protect the island. April 1984, we declared the island a tribal park, and now the whole traditional territory is a tribal park. Well, the biggest thing it's done is protect the land, right? They knew they had to uh, leave something for a future, right? Future generations. Forty years ago, uh, during the Wanajus Hiltuas uh, Tribal Park, I recall marching down the street in Victoria with, with our chiefs and elders. And it was the first title and rights case that took on a logging company. We had opposed the idea of the clear cuts that were going on as Tlaoquiat and Ahauzit people, Nuchanoth peoples. We wanted to protect and preserve a way of life. Really, it was our um, process of, of decolonization. We don't see the ancient rainforest as a tree farm license. After 40 years, really, you know, it's, it's a time of celebration. For me, the beautiful story, the deeper, more meaningful story about the 40th anniversary is the coming together of different peoples around the same love and value of nature and of the ancient cedar rainforests of Mears Island. And even though the term reconciliation wasn't being used back then, I think this is a great example of what true reconciliation can be. True reconciliation is enabled through connection to land and waters and nature. And the interconnection of our relationship with one another is bound up with our collective relationship with Mother Earth. All these years, we've relied so much on living off the land. For me, it's, it's hope, right? That uh, we'll all wake up and open our eyes and, and see what we're allowing to, to happen to our, to our homelands.